I'm speaking about, uh, okay, let me say, I speak a bit about how we grade student assignments. And uh, I do not, uh, okay, so I'm, pro I'm professor at Nazarbayev University in Kazakhstan, but I, I actually live in Germany and I'm from the Netherlands. What's kind of more? I have worked in Poland for 10 years. That let's not waste too much time. I, I implemented logic in, uh, in C++, is how I learned C++, but uh, I, I, I like to implement all kinds of small things. And, and, uh, yes. and uh, I teach the data structure course. Well, let's put on the glasses, okay? Maybe I can read it here. So the, the, we have a first program in class which is based on C. I don't really like it, but it's a fact that I cannot change now. It, it may change in the future. That, and the, the next course is the course that I'm speaking about. That's, uh, that's data structures and complexity. And, the, and the, the, we, we teach just the data structures. It's data structures oriented. And so we, we, we explain what is a dynamic factor. They, they come from C, so they don't know, possibly don't know what this is, that you have these factors that can grow. We try to, uh, then you have stack queues, BST, so binary search trees, hash sets, hash map, all these kinds of things. We try to teach them a big O notation and what it means. We try to uh, explain how is it called amortized complexity. And, uh, and I try to, I put emphasis on good C++ practice, on good programming style, uh, so independent of C++. And, uh, and there are 250 students uh, taking this uh, every year. And uh, we have four assignments, and, and these need to be graded. And I, I speak mostly about this grading process. So do I have a sense how much time I have? Is there some kind of five minutes? Yeah, but they already, oh. this one is already gone. Eh? No. Okay. Go okay, yes. Okay, so the challenge is there's a large number of students, uh, not too much uh, staff, and uh, and we have we have typically also just uh, if you want to, uh, we just don't have enough classrooms for all these students, and that's a problem. But that's uh, not all students are very well motivated. That's a bit. I mean, this sounds negative. It's a small fraction, but somehow this small fraction is capable of uh, producing many problems. So <laughs> I, I, that's but really the vast majority of students really tries to do their best. And then there is the internet, uh, there's Telegram, uh, there's uh, ChatGPT, uh, students are creative. And, uh, and uh, this is a problem. But uh, this, this is also not what I'm speaking about, so. Okay, okay, I, I, I'm, uh, so, but the, I, I'm so, I'm also here not only to speak, but uh, to learn something, I hope. So the problem with uh, coding is you actually must give uh, you must give real assignments to the students and then sit down with them and, uh, and look at what they produced and, uh, and really read it. But we, we just, there's no way, we have no time for that, no way. Because uh, but it's, a, it's a bit like music. I think programming is really a bit like music education. You, you really need to spend time together. But you know, uh, let's say, so we, we just don't have the resources to sit with down with the students. Also, you know, crazy, craziness is, is, is incredibly complex. So uh, students are capable of writing codes that is so complex that you really have to think about it uh, like one hour. <laughs> and then, to, then you have to argue with them. They're going to defend their codes and it, it, it just, it doesn't go. I don't know. So the students tend to be very defensive. And uh, so, so what we really do is give very small uh, tasks. Like, like we ask them, uh, really, we give them a header file and they have to implement function by function. And these functions are only, say, 10 lines long. And that's somehow doable. And, and, and this gets created automatically then. We just, uh, that, that is, uh, so we do things like push, uh, peak, call, uh, pop, and uh, really small things. So, okay, I, I will tell you something that uh, programming is surprisingly hard. I mean, uh, I don't remember it anymore. So there, there are some students don't understand. So a GCD function, you think it's easy. Let, let's say 10% of the students will probably never understand what is in GCD. That we have to live with that. But so GCD function is partial, right? So the zero, zero has no greatest common divisor. So it has already all the problems. And then it, it's also not, it's not well defined because if, uh, let's say, if, if n is a GCD of two numbers, then minus n is also a GCD. And it, I mean, a mathematician will not like this idea, but I think if you are a computer scientist, uh, then functions are ill-defined. And, uh, and your, if you use them, for example, to simplify rationals, both fa your, uh, it, it must work independent of what the GCD returns, right? So you, have, uh, you, you, you must be generous in computer science. So the, 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 this already shows that if, if you understand this, then you're already ready for the life as a programmer. This happens all the time. So I'm, I'm helping you. Just yeah, you, you want to know? Yeah, we want to know. Okay, then students will never understand what is a total order. So students, uh, right, they don't understand. Uh, I mean, uh, the, it's hard to understand what is a hash function, actually, right? You have, an, you, have an, you have a notion of equality, and your hash function must agree with these equalities. Students have problems with that. 
And uh, for example, there are students who don't understand that XOR is commutative, and then they come up with all kinds of creative solutions, how you compute the XOR. So yeah, I want the next slide, okay. Okay. okay, how does the running the test work? This is important. Okay, uh, automated grader is, uh, is written by me. So students start with a full grade, and on every failure, they, uh, they lose points. And this is a bit, uh, it, it, it should be the other way around, right? Every success would give you points, but it doesn't work like this. You start with the full points and you lose them. There is a problem with that. If the, student, if the program doesn't ter terminate normally, then the student loses all the points. And I use a black box model, that's important. So I, you, you run a couple of tests, uh, for example, yeah, so for example, if you do a couple of pushes on the stack and then a pop, and then the result is wrong, you, you don't know what actually what was wrong. It could have been the pushes, it could have been the pop, right? You don't know what was wrong. So uh, this is black. This is disadvantage of a black box model, that you uh, you see wrong observations, but you do not really see what the student did wrong. Okay. Okay, and then I usually run five, seven tests to reduce the risk of failure. But to, yes, okay, thank you. And uh, we always, I, I use these options because these are the least forgiving. And uh, this, is, uh, I, this is my experience. Because uh, if you, for example, and then we always run with file grind. And if, uh, and if the if file grind complains, so we apply the output, student get do, loses points. And students say also the, the file, grind, file grind output goes back to them. Next slide. Okay, and, and, but this is not enough. I, I, my, you, you really must inspect the code. So even students, if code passes the tests, they, they still, there are still crazy things in it. So here are a couple. So, but uh, for example, I checked that they always uh, use size type for indexing, no, uh, no other int types. I understand that the standard committee is changing its opinion that there will be a sign size type soon. But at, but at least it must be long enough, big enough. Did this I uh, don't like if, if I see such code. Right, you, you understand what it does, right? It's a, it, may, it, it most of, on most computers, it will change a capital letter into a lowercase letter. I don't like it when, variable, when variables are not initialized. Use of no pointer, I did that points. So students must use member initializers. Uh, and improper use of try catch, I will explain to you what that is. And bad case log, no, next one. Okay, now I just, uh, I end with some entertaining code fragments. What, what do you think of this? So the, the, this is this compares two strings if the if the returns uh, if the uh, if the case independent. So you would normally write an end here, but but it still works because a, a, C, a std string has a c string inside. So right, if they, if they have different blanks, one of them is going to have a null character and it will, it will work and it will, they will be just not equal. <laughs> so the, this you wouldn't notice in testing because it will pass the test, but it's still bad code. So you have to look at it. Next one. Uh, this, is, this is a cool one. So st students, uh, we t allow them to compute hash values. So they, they, know, then they, they know from Java that uh, hash values are computed like this. Right? So, so as the first one to zero, 31 to the power of n minus one, Okay, now the problem is you start with 31 to the power of n minus 1, and then the, you get lower powers of 31. So how do you do this? You first compute, uh, well, you first compute the first power of, uh, yeah, here the, of, uh, what is it, 31 to the power of the length, and then you d divide backwards every time when you have the, need the lower power. So this, uh, and since it's, uh, I mean, it has, it's a hash function, that function that somewhat works, but still, uh, it's, uh, this is creative, right? Next one. Here is another one. You just use. You can also just use the power from the floating points, right? I think it does a Taylor expansion and it computes a logarithm. But okay, next. <laughs> this is this. You can also compute the power every time new. So right, so no, that's why not. <laughs> that is good. So that will also pass the next one. So okay, how if you, you need a big prime, so uh, you you divide it like this. So this is all cut and paste from student code. Okay, this is uh, the next one. But this is always this is this keeps on coming back. I, uh, it's uh, nothing wrong with it, but yeah, it keeps on coming back. Next. Okay, this this I already showed. This is also a creative way of converting lowercase to uppercase to lowercase. It converts a bit more, of course, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. Next. Okay, how do you find the sm smallest? Uh, power of two that is greater than a given number? Well, well like this, of course. Good. Okay, why not? Next. Oh, okay. 
Okay, now we come to partial functions. So uh, let's skip this. I tell to the students, uh, if you have a partial function, so a function with a precondition, you can, it's, it's often reasonable just to assume that, it, uh, you know, just uh, ignore it. Just assume that the, fun that the condition is fulfilled. You can also check it and terminate your program or throw a logic error. But what is not acceptable is uh, check it, print a message, and then continue. <laughs> and what is also not acceptable is check it and ignore it. But you know, the students are doing it. Next slide. Okay, this is a, what is this? This is a K, this is a, <laughs> so if society, it's okay. And then by the top of the creativity is this one. So this is the proper use of exception. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then my conclusion starts. So coding is hard, uh, teaching coding is hard, grading coding is hard, and you really must inspect the code because what you're, all, everything that you would see there will pass the test. Thank okay. you. Mm, okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.